Five, four, three, two, one. Let's talk. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We're Guess not, what? We're not fancy. You know how, like in movies, oh, there'd be like five, four, three in that little. I just, know. I just count it down. We're not home. That that back cross wall is just a. Uh, it's just a uh, virtual. Virtual, uh, <laughs> virtual thing or whatever you call it. Just your imagination. We're home. Yeah. So. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what? It didn't record? Look, it only gave me 38 minutes. I just did some stuff. Hold on. Okay. No more technical difficulties. Nope. My phone was showing that um, apparently I ha only had 38 minutes of video left. It's confusing me. I fixed it. I'm a genius. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you are a genius, babe. Drink your water, guys. If you gotta pause this video, drink your water. Always hydrate. Just letting you know, hydration is good. Do you Thank feel you like you're like? Is yes, that because you're is leaving me out. You leave. You've been leaving me out a lot lately. That's mean. Yeah, and that is mean. No, that's mean of you to say. That's <laughs> <laughs> mean of you to do it. That, I never leave you out. I feel left out, you guys, sometimes. He's been doing little videos here and there and doesn't even tell me, and what I feel video? left out. You've been, like, doing little videos, and then I feel little like... Little And then I have to pop my little head in. One video at the radio station, and that radio station was very small. That's too much. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're happy to be home. Um, there's just, I think there's a lot to share. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let you, yeah. I'll let you start. Oh. I didn't have nothing. Be then you say that I talk too much. You know what? Actually, I didn't say that. Camera, I didn't... When we're off a camera. You're going to lie right now. You're forgetting who said that to you. Abraham said that. So was Abraham David. No, no, but wait a minute, wait a minute. No, other times you, you say that. Yourself, other woman. times you say that I don't let you talk. <laughs> True or not? No. Oh Lord Jesus. She's getting things mixed up with when we talk to people on one on one, and she's forgetting I had nothing to do with the channel. So it wasn't it wasn't the channel. No. Okay, then you're I can bringing, talk. You guys, you're bringing other business in here that <laughs> shouldn't even be on camera. Okay, then I can talk, right? Go ahead. I'll just chill. No, you <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> All right, talk. Share. So we just got back, guys. And uh, I, obviously, you know that. We already said that about 15 times in the last two minutes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we just wanted to talk. We wanted to pick a verse in a scripture that pertained to what did this whole trip mean? You know, and, uh, and, and what's the core of it? What's the summary of it? You know, we left Sunday, I preached on Sunday morning, and we immediately left and did the interview on Sunday night, and um, we spent some t some days in Southern California with Sharon's family, and I uh, went to a radio station also, KPFK, with uh, Gary Baca, which is Sister Lydia's son. Mm -hmm. She attends our church, and, um, and messaging back and forth with a lot of people yeah. on that, on that, um, on the interview I did with Tony A, which Tony A is, uh, uh, God bless him, man. God bless him. I think he did an amazing job. Very respectful. Very, uh, he's, he's a very intelligent man. I respect him. Absolutely. Um, I've always respected him. Matter of fact, I've known about Tony A ever since High C, which was in the 90s, early 90s. I've known about him, respected him because... He was in the midst of the circles with DJ Quick and Dr. Dre and all these people. And because he was a Chicano and there wasn't anyone else, um, I've always had respect for him. But now, meeting him and talking with him, um, that respect has just quadrupled. You know? But um, anyways, because of that interview, I threw my email out there and I said, hey, if anybody really wants to talk, you know? And... Uh, Man, the last few days have been amazing because we have gotten emails. And it's the type of emails that I was praying for. Uh, emails from people that were Southsiders. Who, those of you that don't know, California has both, been... Both sides. Uh, but yeah, actually. But majority uh, were from Southside. And the state has been split up. 
and uh, it's just been a really ugly war and especially my music that was on the forefront of that and I talked about it on this on this interview and, and there was a lot of people that I'm sure you can't change the people that hate you but it's interesting to see the emails of people that said, you know, I'm active this or I'm active that, whether it's north or south, and, and just sharing their heart with what they felt about the interview. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, because there is redemption in Christ. There is, you know, and, and I thank God that my main prayer in the beginning of that interview, I said, Lord, um, soften the hearts and they need to hear what it is I have to say. Yeah, we did pray right before we got to that interview and that yeah. was our prayer. My, 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 that was my mission is to reach that part of the state and allow people to, to hear me out, you know, and, um, and, and talk about Jesus and not have it be ridiculed or not have my Christianity taken as a joke and really just speak my heart and speak real, you know. Well, what I didn't want to do is, is because I see some of the some of the interviews, not all of them, but they they go on, they come off with this bravado and this gangster mentality with with glasses on, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna be real, I'm just gonna be myself, the way I am on these videos, the way I am, and just share my heart. And I know some people didn't like it because they wanted the old David, they wanted that Sir Dino, like literally, people wanted that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, just, to, think, just that, to make better views? I and know. I think they were trying to ask questions to bring that, that old person out as well mm -hmm. and everything. Because we did see that. We got to... Not during, from Tony. No. During the break, um, we got to see comments and everything where, you know, people were asking questions. We were, Tony, you got to ask him this or you got to ask that, you know. And, and you know, knowingly that that's a, a, a maybe a subject that shouldn't be brought up, you know, because you're no longer that person. And everything but I'm glad with a lot of the things that you did that you did touch from your wife's perspective from somebody looking in um, as you guys know I I don't know much about that life you know um, at all uh, so for me a lot of this was a new experience um, because I did begin to see a lot of the negative comments and I seen a lot of you know not a lot but I've seen some and as a wife um, and as the woman in his life, I felt, you know, a little like, I got a little worried at first, you know, but then I, I was like, Lord, we're in your hands, you know, and you're in control. And um, I know that you're going to move the hearts, whichever way you please, Lord. And, you know, and I believe that that's exactly what happened. We didn't go with no entourage. We didn't go with anybody. It was just my husband and I, that's it. It was just us by ourselves. We walked in there because when you know who you are in Christ, you know, you don't need a big old entourage with you. You don't need all of that. All you need is Jesus, you know, and that's what we went. We went there with just Jesus um, and just knowing that God had a purpose as to why we were there. You know, as he was doing the interview, I was reading, you know, comments and, you know, there were people on there that I was praying in the spirit. And I was just like, you know, Lord, touch this person. Lord, touch that person and everything. And it's crazy because there's maybe a few that I did see that were just saying negative things. But at the end of it all, he's like, man, he goes towards the end of that interview. It really touched my heart, you know, and really, I really began to see that unity. And I think that's so, so important is to have that unity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and. Um, I think I wanted to share this, the verse we're going to talk about today, because I think it leads into some of the other things we, we felt over the trip, mm -hmm. but I want to put it in context of scripture, okay. you know, and, um, uh, Sharon had, had brought this really great passage and that's what we want to talk about today about redemption. And we're going to talk about what that means and in what context we mean it. Let's start with five. But we're in Psalm uh, 130, right? Yeah. Psalm 130 in the Old Testament. Verse 5 all the way down? Yeah, all the way to 8. And it ends there. All right. If you're new to the channel, I yawn a lot. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's not that he yawns a lot. Is that sometimes, you know, we're doing so much throughout the day. We get to our um, devotionals in the nighttime or evening so that way we can release them in the morning. So when you're watching this today, it's because we recorded it either the night before. And sometimes we're doing it really, really late because we are really busy in ministry and doing a lot of stuff. So that's why he yawns. So it's okay. 
So verse 5 says this on Psalm 130, verse 5 through 8. It says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word, I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Okay. Now, um, after he reads it, he's reading it out of the New King, uh, James. New King James Version, and then I go ahead and read it um, in the message. In the message, it says, I pray to God, my life a prayer, and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till morning, waiting and watching till morning. O Israel, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With love, with, with God arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt about it. He'll redeem Israel, buy back Israel from captivity to sin. Yeah. Now, the person that wrote the psalm, nobody actually knows exactly who wrote it. Most of the book of Psalms is written by King David, but there are some that nobody knows who wrote it. And the reason they're called Psalms, they're, they were basically song lyrics mm -hmm. that people would sing and they would teach it to their children and the children would learn it and they would teach it to their children. So they would kind of pass along these, in a sense, they were like prayers made into a melody so people could remember them. You know, that's why, like, it, it sounds like a song, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, he goes, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. So, you know, that very first part is really, really important because this person who wrote is saying, God, I'm waiting for you to give me the answer, and I'm going to have my hope in your word. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my hope in whatever it is that you say. I'm not going to put my hope in what this person says or what that person says, Lord. I'm going to put it on what you say, you know? And why do I say that? Because... If you understood in California of how bad things in the prisons and the streets are, you would understand how big of a deal it was for me to go to Southern California. Have I gone there? I go there all the time. We go visit the family. But this is different because I was going somewhere, letting people know where I was going to be live. Like if somebody really, really didn't like me and I'm literally in the midst of, of Southern California, it, it would have been easy to find me. You know, and um, but the fact is this and people say, how'd you do it? Or he must, you know, he must have a big heart or this or that. No, 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 it's not that. It, you know what it is, guys? I'm not Mr. Super Brave Guy. I'm not Superman. Is I trust in the word of God that he gave me. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. I'm not Mr. Brave. Don't, don't make me out to be this tough guy. Like, no, I just trust in God. I know what God has told me and I know what God has told me I'm going to do in my life. So when I go, it's not like a Mr. Super Tough Guy. It's because I trust and I have hope in his word. That's what it comes down to. Amen. You know, and um, uh, and the next part, it says, My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. And we got to have a heart like that. We got to have a heart where we're like, Lord, I, ha I have hope in you so much that I trust in you more than the sun rising in the morning. Yeah. I mean, and, we, and it says it twice. Yeah, yeah. We, we know the sun's going to rise in the morning. And this person is saying, I have more trust in you than that. Yeah. You know, more than the fact that the sun is going to rise again. I trust in you. You know, and then this is what I like too. In verse 7, it says, Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. Like this person is saying, Israel, hope in God. Yeah. And I can say this, California, hope in God. Northern California, hope in God. Southern California, America, hope in God. Put your hope in God. Quit putting your hope on, on politicians or this or that. Put your hope in God. Yes. And that last part, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant rege redemption. You know what that means? You know what to be redeemed? Mm, buy back. Yeah, it's to be redeemed. Is It's an old word. When uh, when a slave, when somebody was a slave, and let's say you had money, and you saw a slave being treated badly, you would go up to that person, that slave's master, and say, "How much did that slave cost you?" And they'd say, well, "You know, whatever amount they would say." Let's, let's I don't have no idea what slaves cost in the, the back. Let's say a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, huh? How much is that slave worth to you? 
Well, you know, I've been feeding them all this time, this and that. He's, he's worth like ten thousand dollars. I've invested much. Time I've invested into ten it. about ten thousand yeah. dollars. Okay, um, can I buy them back for you for a million? What? And imagine their master saying, "Yeah," and you give everything for that slave. And now what you've done is you have redeemed that slave. That's redemption. Yeah. This is what Jesus did for us. It's not only does he redeem us, he redeems us with an abundant redemption. Is Jesus basically said, I'm going to buy that person and I'm going to pay my life for that person. That's what he did on the cross. Yeah. He redeemed us. Yeah, he did. He set us free. There's no reason to be in chains. There's no reason to be a slave. There's no reason to be in bondage because he came to set us free 2,000 years ago. And not only did he redeem us and set us free, but he gave us life more abundantly yeah. so that we can have it more abundantly. I mean, what, is, what does he say? The, his first sermon, he says, I came to set the captive free. Yeah. Why does that resonate so much with me? Because there are so many people that are held captive by their addictions. So many people held captive by their gang. Yeah. So many people held captive by their own mind, their own thoughts, depression and suicidal yeah. thoughts. There are so many people, and Jesus says, I came to set the captive free. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that even though you're a slave to the things you're a slave to, there is somebody not only willing to pay for it, but has already paid for it. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is accept it. Yeah. So imagine this happened. Remember that scenario? I, I, think, I think it's hard for a lot of people to, to accept when they don't even know their self-worth. Exactly. You know? and, and until they know what they're worth, until they love themselves enough, enough to know that they're worth something, you, you won't be able to accept anything. See, but I think it's, it's really truly looking at yourself in the mirror because we can be our worst enemies. Yeah. And, you know we have to be able to look in that mirror and accept and love ourselves for what God created in us and say, you know what? I am worth it. I'm yeah. worth something, you know? There was, um, in the past, when, the, when the, the African slaves were freed, they didn't have internet, they didn't have phones, they didn't have anything. So when they were set free, in the United States said, that's it, slavery has been abolished. You know, the very next day, slaves still kept working on the, on the, what do they call them? Those houses they lived at? I don't know, but. I they, can't think of the word right they now. They didn't want to go anywhere. Well, they didn't. Well, they, they didn't know. They, had, they, 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 they woke had a up. choice and didn't No, the no, they didn't know. There was no internet. There was no nothing. So the next day they continued to work. Oh, okay. They continued to work. They had no idea because there was no internet, no TV, no Fox 40, no nothing. They continued to be slaves. So what started happening is when a slave would be told that they were free, they would get on horses and run to the other plantations. That's the word. Plantations, okay. And they would go and tell the other Africans, what are you doing here working? We've been set free already. They just didn't know it yet. They had their freedom. Slavery had been abolished, but the plantations didn't know yet. So if it wasn't for one person going and running and telling them that they would have been free and set free already, they would have stayed as slaves. But yet some did make a choice to stay yeah. in that slavery, you know, from what I know, because... Yeah, not all of them left. You know, not all of them And not left. all of them believed And that's it. what I was trying to say yeah. earlier. Some made that... They had a choice, but they didn't take that choice. They didn't make the choice. It's because... When you have people that are so used to a certain life and they're so used to something and they don't know anything new, they get scared. Yeah. That fear sets in of something new, um, of freedom. And I believe that a lot of people also did not take that choice, did not leave and stayed because it's all they knew. Not realizing that it's the same thing now. God is giving us, you know, the freedom. He's saying, I have set you free. I have done all of that. But a lot of the times we choose to stay in the past, we choose to stay in what we're so used to, you know, mm -hmm. why? Because of fear, because mm -hmm. of uh, not feeling worthy, because of the shame, because of all of that, that keeps us grounded to the past life that keeps mm -hmm. us grounded to the things that we're in. And we're afraid to step into something new.
So, yeah. So the first one is you have former slaves going and telling slaves, you're not a slave anymore. Mm -hmm. That is the job. This is why I go on interviews like this and I share Jesus. Because what I'm doing is letting people know You've been set free already. Amen. There's no reason for you to be in slavery. Yes. You have been set free. Somebody died for you. All you have to do is receive it and accept it, and it's yours. So the second part is what you said, is once they hear the news, some people are afraid, and some people don't believe it. Yeah. Nah, it can't be that easy. Yeah, okay, Jesus died too. What is that? It can't be that easy to get away from this alcohol. It can't be that easy to get away from these drugs. It can't be that easy to... You know, so some don't believe it, and some are afraid to leave it. And you just rather say, you know what that's called in prison? Institutionalized. There are people that they've been locked down so long that when it's time for them to parole, they do another crime just to catch more time because they're, it's easier to live in a small cell than to live out in society. And it's a lot of, there's a lot of people that you're so used to your life, your, your life in, in this wickedness, your life in the dark place, that it's just easier than actually opening the door, actually walking out of the door that's already been open for you. And it's just easier to stay in there. And that's what we come across, is our job is to go out and tell people that the freedom is already there. Yeah. And now you've got to make a choice. And that's what scares people. You know, it really does. But redemption is is a beautiful thing because he already paid for us with the ultimate price, his life. And I think uh, some, many don't know how to do it either. They don't know how to to accept or know what redemption truly is. Because I, you know, reading back to a lot of the messages and to reading a lot of that, I hear a lot of like, how did you do it? How did you do it? How did you leave that life? How did you, you know, how this, how that? Because it may, sometimes things may seem easier than what they truly are. But the thing is, is that everything is going to be harder than what it truly is. It's taking the first step is, is just enough for you to go that direction. And people don't think that um, taking the first step is, is making, making a change. But it is a change. You have to realize that. You have to know that by taking that first step, you've already made a small change. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of times, too, there's this, this scripture that Jesus, that God says in the Old Testament, that the Lord says. And he says that his, his word doesn't come back void. In the same way that the rain falls to the ground and nourishes the ground and goes back up, in the same way the word of God does not come back void. What does it mean by that? It means this. It's that God set us free. Now it's our job to spread that out. So it's like rain. He rains it down. It goes out and we share the word of God. And then when you surrender to Christ, it goes back. So in other words, without realizing it, we're throwing seed out at you. Mm -hmm. And out of seed is life. Do you know inside of a seed, no matter how small the seed is, whether if let's say it's a tree everything that tree will ever need is within that seed it doesn't need anything more other than water yeah. some ground to work in and some sunlight some soil some good soil so everything god needs from you has already been embedded in you how do i know that because right now you're getting that seed mm-hmm. the bible actually talks about an incorruptible seed because a regular seed will rot Mm -hmm. But he gives you an incorruptible seed. So if you watch that interview and God's like, all of a sudden it sparks something in you and you're like, man, what, why, why would I, what, why do I feel different ever since that interview? What, what's going on inside of me? I'm telling you what's What's going on. What's stirring, yeah. Yeah, what's stirring is I threw the seed of the gospel. I threw the seed of the gospel and that gospel has now come up. Is it? Could be, I don't know. Oh. You just... He said private. I know. He calls for private number. Oh. So that seed of the gospel, and that's what's happening. So let's say you, you felt that stirring ever since that interview, but now you've sent something else happening because I'm just, now that the seed has been there, now we're watering it. 
That's what we like to say on these devotionals is that we're just throwing water out. Amen. The Bible says that that one plants the seed and another waters, but only God adds the growth. Yeah. I can't make anybody grow. You can't make anybody no. grow. Preachers, evangelists, teachers, they can't make anybody grow. You know what we are? We're just we're just watering the plants. Amen. We're watering the seeds that Jesus pours out and he's going to bring the growth and add the growth to it. Amen. Simple as that. You know, and so there's a lot of redemption. Now, another another point of redemption, too, that I wanted to bring up is it was very redeeming for me. You know, it was a huge redemption for me that I didn't realize it until Sharon just brought it up right now. You know, so another way, like I was saying, is that all this time I, I did interview with Chicano Style TV. I did an interview with uh, Josh at 23 and 1, mm -hmm. but that was like over the phone. I have preached a lot of sermons and testimonies in Northern California, but I had never really truly addressed Southern California. It was almost like an elephant in the room for me because I couldn't ignore it, yet I continue to preach and function and I just, I don't know, you know, and, and it's far away. It's, you know, six hours away. But I planted a lot of evil seed years ago, a lot of hate, a lot of anger toward them and toward me back. And now as a Christian, you know, I'm here preaching in Northern California. I travel around here, live around here. But it's almost like I didn't realize that I never really took the time to address those that I considered my enemy or those that considered me their enemy. So when Sharon said, you know, I like this passage, I don't know in what way you meant it, but I do want to say this to you guys is it was redeeming to me for the first time. It gave me a chance to directly address those that I considered my enemies. Amen. Now, if people want to still hate me and all that, I cannot change that. But I was able to go down to Southern California be interviewed from somebody from Southern California and to share my heart about how I see them now. And that's all I can do is I say, Lord, I'm going to go. I'm going to share my heart. And I just pray that people can not put a wall up and just truly hear me out, you know, and, um, and I feel redeemed in that sense. That I was able to, the Lord was able to redeem me. I don't know what if you've seen it like that or that's, not. That's exactly. That's what you yeah. meant. Oh, okay. And I told you that that was in my heart. Um, well, being that you did marry, you know, someone from Southern California, <laughs> but um, it had been in my heart because that's the way I I looked at it when I, I remember reading the story of Hosea, Hosea and Damar, you know, and and just constantly seeing the the sweet redemption that he had every time that he'd go back for her and go back for her and everything. And, you know, it just made me think like, you know, I felt like it was a redemption story. Um, and I think that sometimes you've done interviews, you've done a lot of things, but I, I still yet hadn't seen that true redemption. It was sharing your story, sharing what you've gone through, sharing a lot of that, um, addressing youth, addressing, you know, but to me, I just felt like this was a story of redemption. Mm -hmm. And it was important to me too, because I'm doing life with you, you know? I'm doing life with you and it, it's important to me um, to have seen this opportunity and to see what took place and everything. And I'm just blessed by it because yeah. I know God is, he, he has such a redeeming love for us. And sometimes when we don't even deserve it, but yet then, you know, he has mercy upon us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a beautiful thing, you know, and for others to be able to recognize that too, for them to know that, you know what, God can have the same mercy on me. And I think that's what was important to see. And I mm -hmm. believe that that's why we're getting such um, results from it and people really truly wanting to change their ways because they're seeing the mercy and they're seeing the redemption. You know, I, I literally had a handful of emails and it started off very similar. They all, a lot of them said, hey David, I just wanted to write you this email. I just wanted to let you know straight up, um, I hated you. Yeah. One of them said, I hated you to the bone. Yeah. It was, but after watching 
your interview and everything changed. And, and that did something to me, you know, because that has always been something I, I never could quite address because I, I kind of feel like it had to be done in LA and it had to be done by somebody from LA yeah. because, you know, I could have done it here at home. I could have done it with, with uh, Chicano style TV, but he's from up North too. I could if to me, it had to be this way. You know, and, and it's crazy because how many times have you guys, regular watchers, you hear me say this verse all the time where God says that he guards, he guides the hearts of men, of kings, any which way he pleases, yes. like rivers. So I truly believe this was the Lord setting us up in a strategic way, wherever it is God wants to do with our lives. But this had to be taken care of first. It had to be addressed, you know, and I think and truly believe that that. I addressed it to the best ability I could, you know, and this is just the beginning of something beautiful, what the Lord is about to do, because, you know, the time is coming short. Jesus is coming back yeah. and he's raising up leaders and he's raising up people, unlikely people. God is not going to use the likely people. He's going to use the unlikely people, the rejected, those that have been tossed aside. And God says, oh, that's the one I'm going to use because I will show the whole world of my glory through that person, I'll get somebody that is, their life is shattered and broken. There's many women that are watching this. You feel like you 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 have been stepped on so much, like, like a piece of glass that you're just little sparkles on the road. You're not even, you don't even look like anything anymore. And God's like, that's exactly what I want. That's I will, what I want because he wants to refine you. Yeah, God says, yes. I will take every little piece of glass and I will make you and build you up. And everybody will know that I am God because he took the impossible and made something and possible. Made, and made it possible. Yeah. And I and, and you know what? And I and I truly, truly believe that because if he can take something like me and create something beautiful out of it, he can do it with you too. Because I just know it and you know, maybe there's some of you that don't know my story, you know, but I really truly believe women, if you're out there, if you're on the other side of the fence where your husband has been you know, somebody that's been involved with the wrong things and everything. And you're on, you're on the end trying to be that support and trying to be all of that. But you feel so pushed, so far pushed to the side that you don't have an effect on what's being done or you don't know how. I'm going to tell you this, that God can do a great work through you, you know, through you, you can reach your family. Mm -hmm. Through you, your husband can be reached, a significant other, the person that you love you know, through you, so much change can take place. And it's so important. You know, I, I've come, I came across even through this, through this um, recent video and stuff uh, through the interview that you had. And I, and I seen some women and I, in my heart, I was praying for them as, as I was seeing comments and all of that. And I was just like, Lord, you know what, be with this per person, you know, touch their hearts, teach them their worth and their self-worth about who they are. And, and let them feel your love. Let them feel the voids that they're feeling that so that they don't feel that this is okay for them to be treated a certain way. Let them be a woman of modesty. Let them be a woman of, of great virtue so that they can become that powerful woman of God that is going to have a say in what takes place in their home. They can help uplift that yeah. man. You know, and those things are so important because if he could take a woman like me that was abused, raped, you know, beaten for most of my time, you know, he can make a change. And I praise God because I knew that I held on and I held on. Man, God placed an amazing man in my life to so that we can come together and be something powerful for God's kingdom. You can have that too. But you gotta believe and you gotta you gotta believe in yourself and know that and make that change and make a choice. Amen. Yes. So this is what we do. Those of you that are new, we do this every morning. We record them at night and then we release them at three in the morning. That way people on the East Coast can watch it as they get up to go to work. Monday through Friday, we do a daily devotional like this. We're just ourselves. We're in our living room. This is our. This is not a, a set, a YouTube set. This is literally our living room. Sharon has a cross wall and the cross wall keeps growing. Um, you know, and um, we are and many have cross walls now. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is what we do. And like yeah. I said, every Wednesday night, we have a live Bible study at the church. And every Sunday morning, you know, we have our, our, our service broadcast live. And um, 
you know, also, you know, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like what we talk about, hit a thumbs up. And most of all, comment. Yeah, we love most comments. Most of all. I we literally, love questions and comments. We wake up and we read the comments every morning. Yeah, yeah, we do. And throughout the day. You know, we look forward to it. And, um, but yeah, so subscribe, thumbs up, comment. That makes us happy. Real easy to make You know what happy. I want to do one of these days? Hmm. I want to interview you. What do you mean? Everybody's getting to interview you. I want to interview you too. Oh. Because there's different things that I really truly believe that need to be questioned and I'd like to hear answers, you know, because I think a lot of the times people interview you about your past and about the music and about all of that, but I want to interview you as a man of God. Okay. Yeah? What do you guys think? I want to interview him. I'm a pretty good interviewer, by the way. I do pretty well. Who have you interviewed? Babe, I used to work interviewing people for positions. You going to hire me? I can hire you to be my husband. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you want me to hire you? Sure. Okay. It's going right. to cost you your life. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys. So God bless you. Good seeing you. How much time did we give them? I have no idea because we start and stopped a few times. Oh, my gosh. So uh, God bless you. It's, it's good to be home. That was my fault. I'm going to render this and uh, get it ready. And you'll be watching this on Friday morning. Yes. Yeah. So God bless. God bless you guys. We love you guys. And have a beautiful, blessed day. Bye. Bye.